looking at the last slide, most financial futures do trade in some sort of a range around their underlying market. Now, this is based on the types of arbitrage opportunities that exist. The S&P futures get out of line relative to the S&P 500 index. Um, the ARB guys can come in and let's just say that the futures run up and, and the, the, the index is not run up. Uh, the futures guys can come in, short the S&P futures, uh, put a long position uh, in maybe a basket of stocks that replicate the S&P 500 uh, performance or you know the spiders or some other method of replicating the index once again. And due to that arbitrage opportunity, the, the S&P futures pretty much stay in a tight range or, or in a certain type of range around the S&P 500 index over the over the course of a trading day. Um, the thing with the VIX index is you can't really replicate, you, you, you can't create a portfolio of securities that replicates uh, what we see quoted as the VIX index. The VIX index is, uh, is uh, quoted based on a wide variety of option contracts and it's actually based on the midpoint. Uh, just this, this, this piece of information alone gives you an idea of why it's very difficult, if not impossible, to, cr to create a portfolio that replicates the VIX index. Uh, the VIX index is based on the midpoint of a large number of S&P 500 index option quotes. Well, you would need to, to, to possibly lock in a portfolio that reacts to changes in volatility. You'd need to trade the S&P 500 index options, the SPX options, all at the midpoint very quickly, and that's uh, that's probably an impossibility to try and keep up with the, um, the VIX index. Um, there's no fair value relationship that we really see between the VIX futures and the VIX index throughout the, throughout the day or from day to day, and I'm going to show some, some pretty good charts that, that do a good job of depicting this. Um, sometimes the futures contracts are at a premium, and that is based on... Uh, uh, the market's anticipation for implied volatility going forward. Um, and sometimes we'll see the futures contract at a discount. Um, very often, and, and we're coming out of one of these periods, um, maybe, it's, maybe it's over, maybe it's not, but we, uh, we've experienced one of these periods recently where the VIX futures have, for the most part, been at a discount to the index. The index has been at an elevated level relative to history and there's an anticipation because implied volatility does over time revert to the mean that the, um, that the, VIX, uh, the, the VIX index is going to come down and the VIX futures are already pricing that in. Um, we're not going to talk too much about VIX index options, but you do need to be aware that the, uh, the VIX index options trade on the same anticipation that the, or the same um, outlook that the um, <clears throat> that the VIX futures trade on. So when you're valuing or taking a look at VIX index options, often the best underlying instrument to take a look at is the um, is the corresponding uh, VIX future contract, the one that expires at the same time. So just a graphical depiction, and, and I was afraid when I first started putting this chart together that the lines would overlap too much. Uh, this is the September the, the September S&P 500 futures contract trades across the street from where I work at the CME Group in the Board of Trade Building. Um, this is a, a daily closing value on the S&P 500 uh, September futures contract up into expiration and also uh, just a, a depiction of the S&P 500 index. And you can see they're in a pretty darn tight range from day to day. Um, if the, there would probably be a little bit more space that, that, that would be a little bit more apparent if, uh, you know, if we didn't have such a, you know, have you know, such a wide range of prices for the S&P 500, I probably should maybe find a more calm market period to, to try and uh, depict this with. But basically you can see um, the S&P 500 index and the S&P 500, the, the futures contracts, pretty much trade in a pretty tight relationship with each other. And just one other, uh, you know, one other thing of note, when you, when you get up in the morning, you turn on CNBC or Bloomberg or one of the other um, uh, business networks, they often talk about what the futures are, are are doing in the uh, the pre market session, and they relate that to uh, what you know what anticipation what the anticipation is as far as the uh, opening for the overall stock market. That's due to this um, this fair value relationship. Now the VIX. I'm going to give you a couple of examples in a couple of different environments of how a VIX futures contract 
traded relative to or was priced on a daily basis relative to the VIX index. First off, back in the spring of last year, uh, well, I guess winter to spring of last year, you can see the, uh, the February VIX futures contract were pretty much at a premium uh, over the whole, I think this is the whole life of this February contract. We're pretty much at a premium to the VIX index over the life of the contract. Um, this was in a pretty normal market environment. Uh, when we're in a normal market environment, uh, we tend to see the futures contracts at a little bit of a, a little bit, or uh, at, at least a little bit of a premium to the uh, the index. You can see as time goes by here, and as we approach February expiration, especially in the last two or three weeks of life for this February contract. Uh, they really do start to mirror each other. So there's not a quantifiable fair value relationship. But when you get close to expiration, um, when the front month has a week or two left to expiration, they do start to mirror each other um, much more closely than they would, let's say, back in the middle of this chart, where you can see some periods. Um, I, let me see if I can. I'm trying to find the laser pointer on here. Option. Well, I'm not finding the laser pointer, but. Um, Right above the end of the word index here, uh, you can see the index spiked up and the futures actually uh, moved down a little bit. So there are times when they're actually moving in opposite directions as well. Um, now here is a uh, more recent chart. Uh, the November contract that expired just a couple of weeks ago, uh, you can see that at times this contract traded at a premium and at times it traded at a discount relative to the VIX index. And you can see when the VIX index ran up to 48 on um, on August 8th on 8 8 the, um, the the futures contracts did not the November future contract at least did not it moved higher but did not move higher nearly as much as the VIX index did so you can see that um, at times in in again what might be referred to as a more nor normal market environment the um, the VIX, uh, the VIX future was at a premium, and then things went a little haywire this past fall. So it gives me a good, uh, good teaching example, if anything. Russell, so. Russell, may, 